In this video, we're going to take a look at variable arguments, or also called arbitrary arguments. So sometimes when you define a function, you want the user to be able to enter some unknown arbitrary number of arguments. So you don't know in advance how many arguments they're going to enter. And you can handle that situation like this. Let's create a function and I'll call it describe person. So this is a function for describing a person. Let's say that they always have a name. So we'll have one positional argument to start with. And then we want a bunch of things that describe that person, which we'll call attributes. So let's maybe just print out the name. And then what are we going to do with this? Well, at the moment, it's just a positional argument. We could only fill it in with one value. But if we put a star in front of it, then it becomes a variable argument. And we can actually loop over it and get the values out of it. So maybe it's better if first we look at how we would actually use this function. So in main here, so let's say we're describing a comedian who goes by the name of Gisele Loco. And she's a stereotypical comedian. So she's, let's say she's warm. I'm not sure if that's stereotypical for comedians, but also depressive and acerbic. And of course, very important for a comedian, funny. So how do we get this list of things? Well, we put the star in front of our variable length argument, which if you've got positional arguments in here as well, the positional arguments have to come first so that they can be matched up by position. And then the rest are going to be shoved into here. So one thing that we can actually do is loop over them. So we can say four, and now I make up a variable name like attribute without the S for attribute in attributes. So it's similar to the for loop that we've seen before, but we haven't got a range here, and this isn't a number either. And then we can do print attribute, again without the S. So we've got two different variables here, one with an S and one without. Let's take a look. So if we run this, then we get gazelle loco, and then we're looping through and printing out the list of things that we put here. Now we could actually call this without any of these variable length arguments. So the variable length arguments could have a zero length. For example, we could write even, let's make up some weird name here, like Guffy, Giffy, Macbeth. And let's say we don't know anything about him. And then we run this and we get his name, Giffy Macbeth, and uh, there's no information about him. I'll put a new line there so it's a bit clearer. And of course we could have, for example, just one attribute. So let's write something here and make up a name. Spiff. Labiff. And let's say that he is wacky. <laughs> and we run this. And there we go. So we've got three people here. We've got Gazelle, Giffy, Macbeth, don't know anything about him, and Spiff, or we know he's, he's wacky. Now, what kind of thing actually is this? We could do a little investigation. So we could use type to get information about the type of attributes, because it's not a string, it's not an integer. Clearly, it's something else. And we could print that. We print the return value of the type function and we find out that attributes is in fact a tuple. It's a thing called a tuple. And we're going to be looking at tuples later. So you might want to know how to get a particular value out of this variable length argument, which is a tuple. And we'll look at all that stuff later on. But for now, I'd suggest simply trying this out. So write a function that has zero or more positional arguments, and then it has variable length arguments, and then just loop over those using this syntax and print them out.
This is one of the last free videos that I'll be uploading to YouTube from my premium Python course. But don't forget that if you register free on my website, caveofprogramming.com, not only will you get access to a bunch of completely free courses right away, but also when I hold a sale, you can get notified about it and potentially you can get any of my premium courses at a sharp discount. And don't worry, if you do click the box to say that you don't mind receiving marketing emails from me, I'm going to be emailing you at most once a month. So please do consider registering free to caveofprogramming.com and you'll get immediate access to a bunch of courses. Thank you so much. And until next time, happy coding.